working on installing the Dynon uh, SV32 servo motor on the right wing and I am really glad right now that I decided to go ahead and order the uh, pedo kit and the servo kit so I could do that while the wing was open. We have found that there's a minor issue either Dynon's changed it or measurements are just off enough but um, down here on the servo motor bracket that I installed last time I was down here uh, we are probably maybe a 32nd or a 16th inch uh, too close to the upper part of the wing so we can't get the bracket in so it's going to require some modification to make that fit and I'll uh, take some pictures and uh, document what we do with that. Um, designed for the Dynon with the plans. Followed in, lined it up. There weren't any specific measurements from top to make sure that the clearance was, so I lined it up as best I could with the bell crank. And what we'll notice is with it in place, it won't sit down because it sits right there. So it's not very much probably just the thickness of that that spar piece. So we'll uh, end up probably pulling that bracket out and either using a new one and shifting it down or using this one and just uh, moving it. So we'll do some experimenting and see what's going to work best. Autopilot servo for roll. The Dynon uh, problem is solved. So what we did is pulled the old bracket and put the new bracket in place. Had to make some minor adjustments. Was able to use most of the original holes that were in the old bracket with some slight modifications. Added a couple extra rivets just for some strength. And that gives us plenty of gap and clearance on the upper skin. So I'll take a measurement and throw that down in my notes on my build log so it's clear so if anybody ever asks I know what the, the distance that has to be from the surface to make sure that, that motor clears and otherwise that is it. The servo motor is in place. Next step is to be working on the arm that goes in. One of the things about the Dynon is they sell a limiter bracket on the front of the servo that limits the travel so you don't go over center. Um, and in talking with Rob, one of the things that is good to know is I don't need to use that bracket on this one because these bolts that go through here actually are the limiters, so you'll see that if I can get to a point where you can see, travel is limited here against that stop and this way against that stop. And that is set up to prevent uh, that over rotation and over center condition of the servo motor arm. So now we're working on the push-pull rod of the servo motor, get that done, and then I'll start working on the skins. So a useful tool update. One of the things I found working here at the shop with the overhead lighting the way it is, I uh, went and picked up a headlamp from Lowe's, just a quick one that has a flood and a spotlight function. It really helps when working on the, uh, the metal or in an area where a shadow just kind of helps obscure the, the light that lights the surface. So anyways, uh, something that was useful. The other, other tool that I got for Christmas for my kids, which uh, has been really useful this go around, is a set of digital calipers. I'll show how that becomes useful here in a minute. But another useful tool that I picked up was a set of metric and SAE wrenches with the ratcheting uh, end on the box end. So uh, that's been useful with some of the bolts and stuff to have handy. So anyways, another set of useful tools to have. Just acquiring uh, more and more as I go along. Dynon Autopilot servo connection to the bell crank on the right wing. I have the plans from Titan on the left all set up. 
read through, double checked everything, had the rod in length. Lesson learned, I ordered the Dynon generic push-pull installation kit from Aircraft Spruce. Initially I was a little confused when I ordered the kit at the servo. Um, I thought they meant the mounting bracket but not the actual hardware kit. So ordered that from Aircraft Spruce uh, from their Pennsylvania shop. It actually got here in about a day, which was way faster than I would thought uh, here at Ohio. So everything got here last night and so I'll get this all hooked up and then be able to move on from here and button it up. So as always, uh, whenever I get a part, do an inventory to make sure all the parts and pieces are there. So double checked, checked off everything that I have and needed. The only thing that isn't included in the kit is the bolt and the nut for connecting the rod end, the male rod end, to the bell crank. So I'll have that hardware here and get that all connected up. Instructions are pretty straightforward from Dynon on that and then combination of the length of the rod from the Titan instructions should make this a pretty straightforward installation. So I'll record a little bit of it as I move forward. Working on the Dynon Autopilot servo installation. Step that I'm working on right now is the push-pull rod. This is part of the kit that came with it. It's an aluminum rod and the aluminum rod needs to be 5.828 inches and it came as 8 inches so I had to cut it down and then I used a, a sander to just take the final edge off. I cut a little bit long and then polished up the edge. So the digital calipers came in really handy in this case exactly 5.828 is the length of the tube. Now I need to tap that out. So to tap it out uh, you need a number three drill bit, a quarter inch by 28 uh, thread pitch um, tap. So I already took, I did a practice run, it's been a while since I've actually threaded anything, um, but drilled it out and then tapped it and I'll show how that works here in a second on the the camera and I'll drill and catch some footage. Push-pull tube is set up in the drill press. I have the number three drill bit marked with a piece of tape at an inch and a quarter. That'll tell me my depth as to how far I should go down. I'll tap it out to, it says one inch, so I went just a little bit more than that with the drill bit to give it enough uh, distance down inside. So I will uh, do that here in a second. The Dynon Roll Autopilot is completely installed with the push-pull rod and everything's connected and operating within the limits. There is not on the Titan a need to use the factory uh, limiting bracket because that's built into the bell crank area. And so I'll show the verification that I did on that tighten everything up, have the cords wrapped and taped so they'll stay out of the road and don't get damaged by anything. Um, but overall, it's a good fit. Everything is set in tight. There's plenty of clearance. Did a double check on the connecting, so the arm connecting nut which it doesn't go high enough but up there that those two nuts clear even if it were to go there and then down there on the bottom there's plenty of gap there so those won't connect and there's full travel on the other side of the bell crank and the Dynan Auto Pilot Servo Moving to the bell crank, the neutral position is about right there with an angle that matches the top of the bracket. You can see the push-pull rod attached. And there's the servo arm at the neutral position. 
fully deflected inboard. When over there on the right, the bell crank arm hits the stop. You can see the so the motor is right there at that line. And then if it goes fully deflected outboard, where it hits the backstop over here, it's down at that line there. The measurement of between those two lines is about 67 to 70 degrees, which is um, plenty. And it, the um, push-pull rod does not break over center, so there's no concern with that locking up. So that's the reason there's no limiter bracket needed for the servo motor for that. So that completes the servo motor install. Now moving on to the next project.